Today, we're diving deep into India's rapid economic evolution. Watch till the end to reveal how India's incredible moves could set it up as a potential superpower, shaping the 21st century. Is India's economic rise just hype, or is there more to the story? How did India turn its fortunes around? After weeks of looking into India's economic data, research, and geopolitical moves, we've pieced together a narrative that might surprise you. Today, India is the world's fastest growing major economy, and it's emerged as the main driver behind Asia's growth, even outpacing China. India's GDP stands at just over $3 trillion, and the Southeast Asian country has also been the fastest growing major economy for the last two years. In 2022, India overtook the UK to become the fifth largest economy in the world by nominal GDP. India isn't just a large player on the world stage anymore, it's a headliner, and it's only going to keep growing. By 2030, India is projected to be the second largest economy in Asia and the Pacific, and the third largest in the world. At the same time, in 2023, India finally overtook China as the most populous nation in the world. The Indian population is now over 1.4 billion people, and it's still growing. Over half of that number is under 30 years old, which means a huge opportunity of youthful energy that will help shape the future of India's economy. But really, India's potential for continued growth is what truly makes it a rising star, where some economies are slowing down. India still has room to grow. Its real incomes are still less than half of China's and a sixth of those in OECD countries. And with over a sixth of the world's population, India contributes just 7% to global output. This means there's still a vast untapped potential in the Indian economy. But in order to understand where it's going, we have to know how the Indian economy got here. India's journey since the 1950s is a story of transformation. After independence, growth was steady yet slow, averaging 3.1% annually until 1979. Then came a massive shift in the 1990s, economic liberalization. This had huge consequences, increasing real GDP per capita growth by 142% from 1994 to 2013. By the turn of the millennium, literacy rates were skyrocketing, while child mortality was plummeting. India was becoming more urbanized, with one-fourth of its population living in cities. All of this was a result of the Indian economy finally coming to its feet. Since the 1980s, the Indian economy has been outgrowing everyone, including most other emerging economies. Between 1992 and 2005, foreign investments surged by a staggering 316.9% as India liberalized its economy. This transformed India's GDP from $266 billion in 1991 to an impressive $2.7 trillion by 2018. Alongside economic growth, India also made remarkable strides for its people. Extreme poverty dropped from 36% in 1993 to 94 to 24.1% by 1999 to 2000. This period of transformation set the stage for India's current role as a significant player in the global economy. So much so that it has people everywhere asking, is India the world's next great economic power? Let's find out. India's economic growth really started picking up in the 1980s and 90s, transitioning from a rate of growth of less than 3% annually in the 1970s that accelerated to over 7% in recent years. By 2019, India's GDP had risen to around $2.84 trillion and today stands just shy of $3.4 trillion. However, this growth begins to look even more spectacular when we look at India's GDP in terms of its purchasing power. As of 2016, India was already the world's third largest economy, measured in purchasing power parity, and that's sure to have increased since then. In fact, India's share of the global economy is projected to increase from 7% in 2016 to around 13% by 2035. That would effectively make it one of the major poles of global economic power, at the same level as the United States economy. How is it possible that the Indian economy could grow to such heights? Let's break it down. When broken down by quarter, recent trends emerge. The COVID-19 pandemic and its economic disruptions dropped India's GDP by 2.5% in early 2022, worsening to a huge 7.5% point drop in the next quarter. Like the rest of the world, India struggled, but its recovery was impressive. 
In quarter two of 2021 alone, the Indian economy rebounded to the tune of 21.6% growth. It has evened out a bit since, but remains high, notching 7.8% growth this past summer. Despite global challenges though, India emerged as one of the fastest growing major economies in 2022, with a yearly growth rate of 7.2%. This impressive rate positioned India second among G20 countries, and nearly doubled the average for emerging market economies. Looking ahead, India's GDP growth is expected to moderate a bit to around 6.5% in 2023-24, mainly due to external challenges and diminishing pent-up demand. This is still a high rate of growth though. The world economy is expected to grow, on average around 3% per year. Meanwhile, India's peers in Asia, as well as emerging economies as a whole, are projected for GDP growth closer to 4-5% to each year. For comparison, China's real GDP looks to grow by 5.4% in 2023, whereas the US is much lower, at just 2.4%. What's driving such incredible growth? As it turns out, India's economic growth is increasingly driven by productivity gains rather than population growth. While the contribution of the working age population to GDP shows a declining trend, productivity is set to become the dominant force. This has a lot to do with India's strong bet on technology and skills development, and should be enough to maintain India's growth momentum in the coming years. When we break it down by sector, the services sector is the clear powerhouse of India's economy. Services contribute to over half of the GDP. Now, India is reshaping its service industry identity, evolving beyond just a call center and IT service hub, growing further into finance, real estate, public administration, defense and other domains like trade, hospitality and communication. These areas are becoming key growth drivers for the Indian economy. And India's service sector is not just growing, it's booming. The services PMI, a key performance indicator, has been impressive so far in 2023. In fact, this level of growth is the highest in 12 years. Additionally, services now make up 43% of India's total exports as of August 2023 a testament to India's increasingly global-facing economy. India's shift towards services and away from agriculture is one that mirrors that of many emerging economies. By 2017, agriculture had fallen to contributing under 20% of India's GDP. But unlike the traditional model, where manufacturing leads early development, India's growth has been especially service-driven, a path less common in its peer group. Agriculture remains important though, Unlike many advanced major economies, India's workforce is still largely dependent on it for their livelihoods. In 2021, nearly 44% of India's workforce was employed by agriculture, with the remainder almost equally split between industry and services. Still, its dominance is gradually diminishing over the years. Somewhat surprisingly though, India's manufacturing center may be on the up and up. It typically makes up around a quarter of the economy but expanded quite a bit in the September quarter year-on-year, -year, with a 13.9% growth. That's a sharp increase from the previous quarter's 4.7% rise. In contrast, agriculture's growth was modest, just 1.2% during the same period. There's still plenty of room for improvement. The Economic Complexity Index, or ECI, measures the current state of a country's productive knowledge. For India, the ECI shows a stagnation over the last two decades. India's service sector is thriving, yes, but the nation has a relatively small footprint in the global goods market, compared to its economic size. This points to a need for more diverse job creation in the future. At the end of the day, though, the biggest judges of the Indian economy are the Indian people themselves. And finally, consumer confidence in India has risen above pre-pandemic levels. In May, the Consumer Confidence Index jumped to 88.5 points, a slight increase from March and higher than the pre-COVID mark of 85.6. With the index previously dipping below 50 in 2020 and 2021, the recovery signals economic optimism across the country. This positive trend in consumer confidence across India is anticipated to carry into 2024, with consumer sentiment forecasted to improve further. Indian economists are hopeful that'll mean an increase in consumer spending to go with it. As it stands, consumers' future expectations have remained consistently optimistic over the past years, sustaining the initial post-COVID recovery momentum. But that optimism isn't universal. While Indian consumers are fairly optimistic about employment, income, spending, and general economic situations, they're also bracing for inflation. 
According to recent Reserve Bank of India surveys, this sentiment is projected to continue over the next year, indicating that ultimately, the Indian public is cautious yet hopeful, and those fears of inflation are a fair concern, but complicated. Broadly, India's inflationary pressures have come down from an average of 5.3% from April to July 2023, a notable decrease from 7.1% in the same period of 2022. That relief was largely due to falling global energy prices, especially for crude oil and coal, leading to reduced fuel inflation and input costs. Core inflation, which was around 5.8% in July 2022, also eased to 4.9% year-on-year in July 2023. However, what consumers are most afraid of is the recent spike in food prices. As core inflation falls, retail inflation has risen. Caused by rising food prices, India's consumer price index rose at an annual rate of 5.7% in November. Despite these trends, the Reserve Bank of India is unlikely to intervene to ease the spike and the elevated inflation levels are expected to continue. However, they're predicted to come back down in 2024. And frankly, Indians are spending like it. India's consumer market is set to become the world's third largest, driven by a rising number of middle to high income households. Currently ranked fifth, India should see a 29% increase in real household spending in 2023. This is most likely a result of urbanization, and by 2027, household spending is expected to pass $3 trillion, as many households pass the mark of $10,000 in annual disposable income. The uptick in India's consumer spending extends to most households too. According to the India Consumer Sentiment Index, about 55% of consumers across both rural and urban areas reported an increase in household spending when surveyed in January. This is in contrast to just 8% who observed a decrease. With increasing disposable income and household spending expected, India's consumer market is on a skyrocketing trajectory. At the same time, however, home prices in India are expected to rise by 7% annually in the coming years, a big challenge for first-time buyers. This increase isn't necessarily a negative, considering it's caused by a resilient economy and strong housing demand. In contrast to developed economies facing potential price stagnation, India's real estate market benefits from the country's economic growth. Still, the supply of affordable housing remains a challenge. Of course, in a country of 1.4 billion people, demand is high, and these trends are once again heating up the Indian real estate market after it had cooled down in the late 2010s. In July 2023, residential property prices in India saw a 5% increase compared to the same month in the previous year. This is all taking place as the Indian population is urbanizing more and more. Since 1950, the urban population in India has nearly doubled to 33% in 2015. Although that's still low compared to other emerging economies, yet the UN expects that to increase to 42% by 2035, which would mean 640 million people in India's cities. New development will have to keep up. But India's real estate market is also flush with global private credit investment, driven by Prime Minister Modi's focus on infrastructure development. This interest is heightened even more by the downturn in China's property market. In the first half of 2023, over $4 billion in private credit flowed into India, with real estate receiving more than half, and it's expected to continue, a positive sign for India's real estate market. So far, we've seen plenty of optimism and positivity around the Indian economy, but one area where it still falls flat is labor. Although India's unemployment rate showed a positive decline to 7.1% in September 2023, it still remains much higher than most advanced economies. Since 2018, the average unemployment rate has been 8.15%, with a peak of 23.5% in April 2020 due to the pandemic. And even though India is the most populated country on Earth, its labor force participation rate is quite low. Only 51% of its working age population is part of the labor force. That falls notably short of its neighbor, China, 76%. To match China's labor force size by 2023, India would need to surge its participation rate to over 70%. However, increasing the labor rate isn't the only challenge. A large part of the lagging participation is India's rural population. In rural India, self-employment is prevalent, with 54% of households engaged in it between July 2021 and June 2022. Casual labor follows suit, while salarized jobs make up an even smaller fraction. 
approximately 14% of the employment landscape in these areas. Then there's the issue of India's female workforce. India's female labor force participation rate remains one of the lowest globally, comparable to countries like Afghanistan and Somalia, and even behind Saudi Arabia. Despite overtaking the UK as the world's fifth largest economy, India hasn't mirrored the typical development path where women's workforce engagement rises with economic growth. Its peak labor force participation for women was only 31% in 2000, and dropped to 24% in recent years. There are some positives though. In 2024, Asia should see salaries rise, with India anticipated to be the major winner, with a 5.1% increase, outpacing both Indonesia and China. That's a far cry from the expected growth in salaries in the West like the UK, for example, which will only see a 1.3% increase. And more jobs may be coming to the subcontinent soon. Apple recently hinted at potentially reducing its dependency on China by urging its battery suppliers to boost production in India for the upcoming iPhone 16. While expansion plans in India have faced setbacks, the largest company in the world is trying to establish or enlarge their manufacturing presence in India, a move that would certainly boost the Indian economy. But while Apple is investing in the future of India, its own investment in itself seems to be lagging. To maintain its rapid growth, India needs to boost its investment levels. Historically, both private and public investment have been on the rise, but since about 2008, there's been a downturn in both investment and saving rates relative to GDP. Private investment in particular has seen a significant decline, shrinking by 22% from 2014 to 2016. Some economists are hopeful though. Recent polling showed economists expect government spending to be a key driver of growth for India's economy this fiscal year. A significant portion of that will likely come from the government's capital expenditure, with exports and consumption not expected to make a large dent. Not everyone is so sure though. At least one major international bank anticipates that the Indian government might actually reduce its investment in capital expenditure as it shifts its focus towards budget control. Economists suggest that there's potential for the private sector to step up its investment efforts to fill the gap, but that's yet to be seen. In fact, the Indian government's potential to hold back and focus on balancing the budget may be an important consideration. In 2021, India's government debt reached a staggering 89.3% of its GDP, peaking from an average of 69.4% since 1980, and significantly higher than its pre-pandemic levels of around 70%. While high, it's only the 15th highest globally, notably lower than the US's 116%. But what about private investment? What's holding it back? The culprit, it turns out, is probably inflation. National accounts and corporate data indicate that high inflation rates are dampening personal consumption and, consequently, curbing private sector investment in expanding capacities, making tackling inflation an even more important task for the Indian economy. There's still hope, though. Even against the backdrop of rising interest rates, public investment prospects in India are brightening. More announcements of investment projects came in March of 2023, and so government capital expenditures, both central and state, are expected to remain strong through to 2024. Infrastructure, particularly roads and energy, is seeing the bulk of this growth, which bodes well for even further growth to come. But you know what they say, no private investment, no problem. India has seen a dramatic increase in foreign direct investment since its economic liberalization began in 1991. FDI inflows have surged 550-fold, from just 13 million in 1992 to 71 billion in 2023. This growth in FDI points to heightened interest from Western nations and strategic partners in the Middle East, reflecting India's expanding role in the global economy. The US is by far the biggest investor into India today. It's become the top source of FDI for India in the fiscal year of 2023, and alongside Mauritius, the UK, and Singapore, these countries make up 60% of the total FDI India received this past year. The US alone contributed $103 billion. That's a massive 17.2% share of the total FDI inflow into India. And so, it's no wonder that India ranks as the third highest recipient of FDI in new greenfield projects specifically.
In 2022, it ranked only behind the US and the UK, with a 10% increase in total FDI, amounting to $49.3 billion. Additionally, India secured the second largest share of international project finance in 2022. And the future looks bright too. Signed at the G20 Summit in New Delhi, the India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor, or IMEEC, is an emerging trade route designed to connect India with Europe to boost trade and secure supply chains. It includes partners like Saudi Arabia, the UAE, EU nations, and the US. The corridor is expected to boost FDI inflows into India, fueling economic growth. Unfortunately, the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas has caused some uncertainty on the IMEEC. The war has affected the stance of Saudi Arabia, a key signatory on normalizing ties with Israel, a central link in the IMEEC. And with heightened vulnerabilities in cities like Haifa, the conflict poses a strategic setback for India and the corridor, which would be a massive boost for trade. Putting the conflict aside, however, there's still a lot to be done for India's trade potential. India's trade deficit shrank early this year after having grown since 2020. But both imports and exports saw a decline as imports fell by 14% year-on-year and exports contracted by 14.5% due to lower international demand. Overall, India finds itself with a trade deficit, mostly from higher imports of goods. In recent months, though, the trade gap has widened again. India's trade deficit jumped to a 10-month high in September. The culprit? Mostly the rising costs of oil imports. But the Indian rupee edged closer to an all-time low, following the release of the data. Still, it's worth keeping in mind that domestic demand within Asia's third-largest economy is staying strong, but India needs to work on reeling in its trade deficit. And there's some clear steps India could take. India's trade policies are far more protectionist than its emerging market peers, with its average customs duties over double. Its exports face average duties of 4.4% to the EU and 4.3% to the US, while its own import tariffs stand at 18.1%, much higher than China's 7.5%. Reducing these tariffs could boost India's exports by an additional $80 billion per year. Another potential step could be expanding its free trade agreement, or FTAs, with other countries. For example, reducing tariffs with the UK could add $400 million to India's 11 billion annual exports there. India currently has 13 FTAs including recent ones with the UAE and Australia. And the Australian agreement alone boosted exports by $700 million, proof of what dropping its protectionist stance could bring. India could also stand to capitalize on a global China plus one strategy, where firms diversify away from China to enhance supply chain resilience and cost effectiveness. This is exactly what we saw with Apple earlier. And India's competitive advantages, like its talent pool, demographic benefits, and lower labor costs, make it a compelling alternative. Now, today, India closely rivals China in the global value chain for traditionally traded goods. Its trade with the US and the EU is strong, and it makes India an increasingly favorable trade partner compared to China. With its exports to the US and Europe outpacing China's from 2020 to 2022, Despite this progress, India still lags behind peers like Mexico and South Korea in terms of its comparative advantage. To its credit, India is working to promote more trade. Its new foreign trade policy aims to boost exports amid global slowdowns, focusing on rupee-based international trade, especially with countries facing dollar shortages. The policy targets $2 trillion in exports by 2030, a significant rise from the present $770 billion in 2022 and 2023. Speaking of India's neighbor to the northeast, how does India stack up to the economic behemoth that is China? There was once a time, decades ago, where the two Asian economies were comparable. But that all changed around the 1990s, when China's economy took off, leaving India's economy in the dust. Today, China's GDP is almost five times higher than India's. But in recent years, the growth rates of the two economic giants have begun to diverge, as China faces economic challenges, including rate cuts and deflation. India's economy is thriving. India's GDP is set to grow over 7% in 2023, with per capita growth at 6.2%. Meanwhile, this contrasts sharply with China's deepening debt crisis and slowing growth. Yes, China's nominal GDP has seen higher growth rates in the past decade. However, the figure looks different. 
China's population is now declining, with an expected loss of 8 million people by 2027, while India is set to gain over 75 million, surpassing China as the most populous country. Additionally, India's real GDP growth is forecasted to exceed China's by over 2 percentage points each year from now until 2027. Could there be a chance for India to play catch-up? It's a tall task for sure. Some reports claim that India would need to boost its nominal saving rates to 32.3% of GDP and increase workforce growth to 3.5% annually. This requires higher female workforce participation and expanding global exports. Public investment too would be crucial for achieving higher GDP growth. Today, India, with an economic size crossing $3.5 trillion, resembles China's economy in just 2007. But while similarities exist, there's also significant differences in their development paths. India is not likely to catch up to China, at least not anytime soon, without strengthening areas like manufacturing, investment, and workforce participation. India will find it difficult to replicate China's rapid economic miracle. At this point, we've seen how far India has come. But you may be wondering, what does the future look like for the Indian economy? One of the biggest keys to India's future will be, of course, its growing population. And more and more, this large young demographic is being viewed as the crown jewel of India's economic dreams. Over the past few decades, India's working age population, between ages 15 and 64, has skyrocketed. It'll pass the 1 billion mark by 2026 and peak 1.1 billion in 2048. Life expectancy too is set to increase from 67.7 years to 77.9 by 2050 and further to 82.3 years by 2075 a massive increase in living standards for Indian citizens. It's important to recognize that India's growing working age population is a huge economic opportunity. In the next two decades, India could have the world's largest workforce, and as a percentage of its population, it'll pass other BRICS countries like Brazil, Russia, and even China. That is key because it means India, unlike China and Japan, will keep a smaller total dependency ratio. That's the proportion of dependents, children and those over 65, to the working age population. India's is projected to drop from 47.5% today to 45.1% by 2032, then gradually rise but stay below 50% until 2050, far below its Asian neighbors. India's large and youthful population is a precious and rare resource in an aging world. Lower dependency ratios and an ever larger and still growing workforce firmly place India in a position to keep on growing. But like everything, there's a catch. With all its young people, India still has the problem of creating enough jobs to meet their demand. To fully leverage its demographic dividend, India must improve its education system and reform its labor market particularly by addressing high youth unemployment. With around 23% of young people unable to find jobs in 2022, India's youth employment rate is one of the highest in Asia, second only to Sri Lanka. This is going to be a key challenge for India to solve moving forward. The next key to India's economic future comes from AI. The next technological revolution is upon us, and India's government is keen to take advantage. The Modi government hopes to potentially add $967 billion to the economy by establishing three AI centers of excellence, as announced in the 2023 budget. India's AI market will grow by 20% in the next five years, and it's becoming a key driver of economic growth. A surge in AI-related jobs reflects this trend, with AI job postings on LinkedIn piling up. India's unique advantage is its large AI talent pool, behind only China, and ranked sixth globally for AI investments, India's AI sector is just getting started. Already, international corporations are taking notice. During his visit, the CEO of NVIDIA, the major chip designer, emphasized India's potential as a hub for AI development, chip production, and market expansion. NVIDIA already has four engineering centers in India, including in Bangalore and Gagaon, with a 4,000-strong engineering team that should only continue to grow. Growing India's AI sector is already a key part of Prime Minister Modi's vision for India's future. At a recent summit on AI, Modi proclaimed India would take full advantage of the up-and-coming technology. He stressed that it would be used to uplift all of India's population, bringing social development and growth for many aspects of the economy. Like always though, there are challenges ahead. Brain drain is especially concerning. 
Since 2019, many of India's skilled AI professionals have emigrated to countries like the US or Europe. India needs to retain its talent with better job prospects and more private investment in the sector. With Indians about to be 20% of the world's highly educated young workforce by 2030, India has to do better. Then there's the issue of the climate. At this rate, climate change's economic impact on India is expected to be significant, with the country projected to face job loss of up to 34 million by 2030 due to heat stress alone. Extreme heat and humidity could put up to 4.5% of India's GDP at risk in the same period due to lost labor hours. India's agricultural sector is likely to be hardest hit. Historical data shows a potential yield boost for rice, but reductions in wheat due to rising temperatures. Not to mention, changes in Himalayan ice loss and unpredictable monsoons will also have a wide range of impacts, like delayed crop sowing and more. The impact on GDP could also be massive. According to some projections, climate change could lower India's GDP by an average of 7% by 2050, with even a 1.5% temperature rise causing a 6% reduction. And India's projected losses are far greater than China's, by 2% for 2050. Without climate action, a 3% temperature increase by 2100 could see GDP decline by up to 9%. Thankfully, the Indian government is aware of this challenge. India has committed over $160 billion in spending for climate adaptation, over 5.5% of its GDP, and plans to invest almost $700 billion over the next seven years. Time will show if India's climate strategy is effective. India's economic future is undoubtedly bright. Alongside other Southeast Asian nations, India is expected to lead in economic expansion over the next decade. In fact, the region as a whole is expected to grow faster than any other. India, in particular, is slated to boom from $3.5 trillion in 2022 to $7.3 trillion by 2030, overtaking Japan as the world's third largest economy. In the short to medium term, India is just going to keep gaining momentum. Growth projections hover between 6.5% and 6.8% for fiscal year 2023 and 24. Even in pessimistic scenarios, the economy will keep gaining steam into 2025 and 2026, with growth up to 8% as the global economy strengthens. Unfortunately, inflation will remain a concern, with rising food and oil prices expected to keep inflation high. The core inflation, although stable, is at the higher end of the Reserve Bank of India's target range. The potential spillover effect could lead to uncontrolled inflation, but with the right measures, the forecast is that of decreasing levels. But still, the dominant trend for India is growth, growth, growth. India is likely to become the second largest economy by 2075, with a GDP of $52.5 trillion, closely following China and surpassing the United States. With such meteoric economic rise, India's influence on the global stage over the next five decades is bound to increase exponentially. In fact, such an economic outlook means that India is going to be the dominant economic story of the next century, not China or the US. India will outshine them both. Despite global growth slowing to 2.7% this year, India's rapid rise shows no sign of stopping anytime soon. Ultimately, the lesson is, don't bet against India. The incredible Southeast Asian nation has maintained economic resilience amidst global challenges like the war in Ukraine, widespread trade disruptions, and even through COVID-19. India has managed to outperform most estimates and certainly outperform all other major economies. All in all, the future is bright for the Indian economy. Don't forget to subscribe so you get notified of our next video. Thanks for watching.